Hello everyone and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. My name is Sarah. In today's video, we are making five awesome, neutral, patriotic decor DIYs that are quick and easy using mostly Dollar Tree supplies and some other low cost options. These five projects are all festive Americana for the 4th of July while still being neutral and rustic, high end looking decor. Great for Independence Day or any day. That you're gonna love, so stick around. And let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. To begin with, I'm using both the long, I think they're 18 inches long, and the shorter, thick paint stirrers that they sell at Home Depot, and that's where I got them. I used my electric mini saw to cut them to size. I will link that tool for you in the description box below. But you could easily cut these with a small miter box and saw as well. And I'm also using the Jot clipboard from Dollar Tree. I pried the actual clip part of it off from the top, and I'm just using that eight and a half by 11 inch board. I used the larger paint sticks to cut out a frame to fit on my clipboard base and the larger sticks are just much thicker and a heavier wood than the smaller ones so I cut the long sides of the frame a little over 11 inches each, there's two of them, and the two shorter sides were about eight and a half inches long. I used the mini chop saw to cut those and we won't need to cut the smaller paint sticks, we'll be using the whole stick. And the stain I'm using for the frame is Varathane Wood Stain in the color Golden Oak, and I will link that for you below. I'll be using the smaller sticks to cover the clipboard base, and they're running vertically, so that's the long way. And with the frame, they pretty much fit exactly without needing to be cut. I'm staining the four pieces of the frame plus four of my base piece sticks in the golden oak color. I used a total of two coats of the stain on all eight pieces just for good coverage. I also used a dry paper towel to rub off the excess stain before letting those pieces dry fully for about several hours. While my stain was drying for the other base sticks, I needed four of them for my tray. Oh, Yes, spoiler alert, we're making a tray. If I did not mention that before, it's a tray. So I needed four more sticks for the base, but I painted five of them just, you know, in case. And I'm using a mixture of Deco Art, titanium white matte, acrylic paint, and it's mixed with water. That's just to give them a nice whitewash effect. And I'll link the paint for you below. I did two coats on each stick and wiped the excess with a paper towel so that I could still see that wood grain under the white watered down paint. Taking my stained frame pieces, I'm going to first partially assemble the frame. I use tight bond quick and thick wood glue. I'll link it for you below. I start by gluing down one of the vertical or those long sides of the frame to the clipboard on the edge. And also just a note, obviously we want to turn the sticks so that the printed measurements like the ruler that's printed are facing inside so they'll be less noticeable. Same thing with the smaller sticks for the base of the tray. We will be gluing those with the printed ruler side facing downward so that we can't see them. I then take one of the shorter side frame pieces and I glue that down too. I did glue down the opposite short side of that frame also, but I quickly realized that I had to remove that until I had glued down all of my pieces onto the base. So now for the base, I'm going to alternate between the whitewash and the golden oak stained base pieces. I begin with the whitewash and alternate from there until the whole clipboard base is covered with the painted and stained wood paint sticks. At that point, I can glue down the other short side of the frame, followed by the remaining long vertical side, so that my tray now has its base completely covered with wood and all four sides of the tray are completely framed in. I needed some decorative handles for the sides of my tray and I had a couple of these brown suede patches in my sewing stash that I had no idea were there. So I don't think I'm going to miss them. I don't think I was going to use them for anything else. I cut two strips out of the middle of one of them and I used some tacky glue from Dollar Tree to glue the suede handles to the inside frames on each end 
of my tray right in the middle. They really are more decorative than functional, so I don't recommend using these handles to lift the tray. I also had some gold push pins that I got at Dollar Tree and using a wire cutters I carefully snipped the sharp points off of them to leave a flat gold piece. Please be careful when you cut these they can go shooting out from the wire cutters and no one wants sharp tacks flying through the air so please be careful. I glued a gold tack onto the ends of my decorative handles just to make it look like a metal stud or something like that. I had a bag of assorted sized wood stars that I got on Amazon. I will link it below. Left over from Christmas in my stash, so I picked out eight of the largest ones and eight of the medium sized ones. The large ones I painted with my folk art home decor antique wax, I will link it for you below. And then the eight middle sized ones, I painted those with folk art chalk paint in the color sheepskin, which I will also link below. And then I let them all dry. Lastly, I used the tight bond wood glue and glued three large brown stars on each side of my tray and then one on each end of the tray, followed by the white stars in between those. And at that point, my tray was complete. And this is how DIY number one, my neutral stars and stripes wood tray turned out. I love this tray. I just think the whole Stars and Stripes, but with all neutral wood shades, is a breath of fresh air and something unique and different. I also feel that you could display this tray in your home way past the 4th of July holiday. I think it works beautifully for everyday decor. It has a definite rustic vibe to it as well, but I'm in love with the wood tone twist on the Stars and Stripes of the flag, but I want to know what you think of this tray. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this neutral stars and stripes wood tray. Would you display it all year round? For our second DIY, I'm using this wall shelf from Dollar Tree. It's not made of wood, it's some kind of press board, but we're going to paint it, not stain it, so I'm really not concerned. I'm also using some of these three inch wood letters I got on Amazon, I'll link them below. I bought them to use for last week's Father's Day DIYs and I had a bunch left over, so I am using them this week too. The first thing I do is to paint both the shelf and the letters with my folk art chalk paint in the color sheepskin, which is an antique ivory kind of off-white shade. I want everything to have a nice base coat. Next, I grab some folk art home decor chalk paint in the color Nautical, which is a really matte, slightly muted navy color. It's a really nice color blue. I'll link it for you below. I'm going to paint the entire shelf in the Nautical color and then set it aside to fully dry. I assemble my letters on my sign. I think you can tell where I'm going with this. I use a piece of painter's tape and tape across the bottom of the sign so that when I line up my letters on the sign, they'll be straight. Then I position all the letters where I think they'll fit best. And it is a tight squeeze to fit the whole word America, but this is America and we're gonna make it work. I'm feeling very patriotic today. <laughs> Off camera, I had taken several pieces of painter's tape and cut them in half, and I placed them on some wax paper. I needed them to be thinner than the whole piece of tape, so I cut it in half. So while my letters are properly positioned, I put my first piece of painter's tape along the top edge of the letters, and then I put a second piece, and that's going to be the spacer, and then a third piece of tape under that. So now I can remove the second piece of tape and I, that way the stripes will all be even as we go down and I continue that pattern down to the bottom of all of my letters. Since the letters are all taped together, I remove them from the sign before I start to paint them. I'm using Apple Barrel acrylic paint in the color Flag Red, which I'll link for you below, and I use a small brush to carefully paint the exposed areas to form my stripes. And I'm trying my best to not let the red 
bleed through under the painter's tape, but if there is bleeding, it is easy, easy enough to fix with just a little more of the uh, sheepskin chalk paint if I need to. Next, I use the Folk Art Sheepskin Chalk Paint and a dry brush to lightly distress the blue sign with the chalk paint. I just lightly run the dry brush over the front and the edges of the sign and all the places where it would naturally distress with age, and that's the look that I'm going for. I'm going for the same distressed look with my letters, but this time I'm using the Folk Art Antique Wax and running a small dry brush against the edges of the letters and the areas where the white meets the red just to help it look authentically distressed. And honestly, I have to say the whole time I was distressing each of these letters, they just screamed Dr. Seuss to me with all that white and all that red. I don't know why. I just felt the need to mention that to you guys, but the zeusicalness was, it was overwhelming to me. The last thing to do was to glue my letters onto the sign and I used the tight bond quick and thick to do that. And I also wanted to mention that I used some hot glue to fill in the four little holes in the corners of the shelf and then painted some nautical chalk paint over that glue. If you wanted to put some twine in the holes to hang the sign, you could skip that step and just leave the holes. I wanted mine to be a standing sign. And this is how DIY number two, my patriotic America sign turned out. This sign really surprised me. I did not expect to like it this much. And there's always a project that I don't expect to like, but turns out to be my favorite. And in this case here, I think this is it. I think this simple red, white, and blue America sign is seriously charming. I realize that the color scheme does make it more on the rustic side than neutral, but I think the slightly muted and distressed colors bring a little neutral in as well. I love the way the distressing looks on both the letters and the base of the sign, and I just think it's truly a stylish bit of Americana decor. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you love this simple but classic America sign. For DIY number three, we begin with this small square box frame from Dollar Tree, and I remove the beaded hanger since we're not going to be using it. And I also decide to just turn the insert over and use the back for my project instead of trying to remove the image that's in the front. I'm painting the base with my folk art home decor chalk paint in the color sheepskin and I give it two coats to cover up that darker brown color of the base and I'm also using that same color chalk paint to paint over the white frame. I'm using 12 similarly sized black river rocks from Dollar Tree and technically I only need 10 but I wasn't positive which of the rocks I liked the best so I'm going to paint 12 of them to start and I'm still using the sheepskin chalk paint and using a small brush I paint the top surface of each of the rocks. It does take two coats and in some cases three to get full coverage since the rocks are black. For the base, I needed to paint a grid with nine boxes for, if you haven't guessed, a tic-tac-toe game, which is what DIY number three is. I used this very thin washi tape I had on hand to tape off my grid outline, and it wasn't the best tape for the job, but it was very thin, and I just really didn't feel like cutting any more painter's tape, so I used that. I am painting the grid with folk art antique wax, and I do end up going back in with the chalk paint to fix up my lines and there are spots where my red washi tape just bled right through. Off camera, I took five of my painted river rocks and using some white washi tape that I had cut in half, I used the same method as my America sign and I taped the rocks and then removed every other piece of tape to give me even lines. I'm using Craftsmart acrylic paint in the color golden brown, and I use a small brush to paint the exposed lines on my taped river rocks. And yes, I did have to go back and fix up those lines due to the bleed through on the washi tape. I do wish that they made painter's tape in all different widths, like super thin, tiny line widths. Someone should invent that. Next, I'm using five of those leftover stars that I had used earlier, and I picked out the smallest ones, and I paint them with the Folk Art Antique Wax, wiping off the excess paint with a baby wipe, and then using my tight bond wood glue, I glue one star to the top of five of my chalk painted river rocks. And lastly, I reassemble my base piece back into the box frame. 
And this is how DIY number three, my neutral stars and stripes tic-tac-toe game turned out. Admittedly, this DIY is not my favorite of the bunch, but it is most definitely neutral and the stars and stripes are Americana, so it does fit in with the rest of my projects. And you know, it is kind of cute. I think this could work on a coffee table or outside table and it will blend nicely with any neutral decor. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if this stars and stripes tic-tac-toe game is a yay or a nay from you. DIYs number four and five are closer to the traditional patriotic decor. They're very easy and quick and very similar to each other. So we'll do those together. First, I had this wooden home sign from Dollar Tree that I think I've had forever, and I gave that an all-over base coat of the sheepskin chalk paint and then let that dry. I also had this larger love sign from Dollar Tree that's left over from the Valentine's Day stuff, and it's not what it's pressed for, but I'm going to paint it so it doesn't matter. I removed the twine hanger from the top, and I also give that a base coat of the sheepskin chalk paint on the front and also on the thick sides of it and then I let that dry. I tape off each individual letter of the love sign and first paint the L with the nautical blue chalk paint. I'm painting just the front of the letter, not the sides, and then I paint the O and the E with my apple barrel acrylic paint in flag red. I leave the V as white. Then on the home sign I've taped off half the O and I am painting the H and half of the O with the nautical chalk paint, and I'm painting just the front of the letters. I take the remaining small wood stars that I have and I place them on packing tape just to hold them in place, and I paint them all with the sheepskin chalk paint. Back on my home sign, I tape off the H and the half O, and I had cut several thin wavy lines out of my painter's tape and I just eyeballed the size, didn't measure them so they were not exact. I positioned the wavy lines across the O, M, and E like I had spaced all the other stripes that we've done before this and painted the exposed letters with apple barrel flag red. I used some antique wax and distressed the edges of all of my painted stars. I gave a quick sanding on the edges of my love sign and placed my painted stars positioned onto the blue L, and then I used my wood glue to glue them all down into position. Lastly, on my home sign, I did the same with my distressed white stars and glued them onto the blue H and then the blue part of the O. And this is how DIYs number four and five turned out. I love these super patriotic love and home signs. They are definitely more of a traditional red, white, and blue 4th of July decor kind of vibe, but I really love the way they look. And honestly, that little home sign, that just makes me so happy. I could easily see something like that in a high-end store, and we made it for about $1.25, and it took about an hour, so that is truly amazing. And these are all five of my neutral and rustic patriotic decor DIYs. There are a couple of standouts to me, the America sign, the wood tray, and that little home sign for starters. I really love the three of them, but all in all, these five DIYs were super easy to do, some of them ridiculously quick to make, and I think they have a really nice impact decor-wise. But as usual, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comments which one of the five is your favorite and if there are any that you'd consider displaying all year long. I hope you enjoyed this Medicated Housewife DIY and if you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It really helps out my channel. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife and crafting is my medication.